Good morning. Good morning, friends. As you see, I'm not alone here today. I'm with a colleague. This colleague was not introduced in the program, but that was my trumpet. And for me, that's a symbol. On my way of a CEO, I often encounter rakes. And today I will be telling you about some decisions to which we came when we stepped on those rakes. And we continue to do this because the market is not well developed and not many people share their experience and not many people can go all the way by themselves and every day we step on these rakes and it's very bad that we step on the same rakes so therefore I will tell you that I'm not stepping on them I'm just dancing on them so therefore today I will be telling you about the rakes that we stepped on and I will give you specific solutions and metrics and we'll put it in there as a reminder we'll speak about profit today and we'll and we will not use any financial terminology so profit is will be the only term here as a financial in the financial terms so profit is what we get we spend something those are expenses and profit what we put into our pockets if we make it as simple as that and Ruslana are you satisfied with the profit of language solutions pro Yuri I believe that there is always a room for improvement Sometimes I feel that we don't have j just the room, but it's some kind of a vast, vast field. Yes, with the rakes. If you are satisfied with the profit of your company and and as it was yesterday, so let's start from who you are. I am a head of Prof Pereklet company. Prof Pereklet, according to Konstantin Dranch, is the third largest company, as far as I understood. From those who are present here, we are the biggest on the stuff if we exclude translators. How many staff do you have? 50. Also, we work on the local market, and local market is very special, and therefore there are changes. So the first part of what I'm going to tell you about concerns local markets, and then I will go on with what concerns everyone. And here is another guy I would like to introduce today. It's Hernan Cartes, it's the Spanish conquistador, who lived in 16th century, and uh, he conquered Mexico and conquered Aztecs and the city which was called Tlaxitlan now is called Mexico and he was the only single ruler of it but that is not the case when he went to Mexico his task was not to colonize it his task was to make investigation and come back to Cuba. But he was an ambitious guy. And when they conquered several villages, he encountered a problem that his team wants to go back home. They were satisfied by their muscle of pyramid and they want to go back with gold to and he, he was an ambitious person, he wanted to conquer Aztecs so that he could conquer this mutiny on board. He sunk all his ships and uh, all the ways back were cut off. 
and any hesitation was lost in his warriors. So, so that's what we did recently, and we liked it, and we did it again. So, how did it happen? Every year we we increase the salary for our staff employees, and we do it like that. We order an analysis of salary market, we describe competences, qualifications, and we get the analysis of the market where you can see the average salary for people who work with us. And our goal is to pay more than average, because we need to keep our team, and we believe in them. So I think that our guys should get good salary. And there is a minus to this approach as well, because when we, of course, we make a budget and we make financial planning, but when we first raised the salary, when dollar was 8 hryvnias and then it became 25 hryvnias per dollar, uh, this is the picture we saw. And we have a question at this moment. What do we do? They say you don't have to spend less, but you have to earn more. And we started to spend more. So the answer is quite obvious. So we had this question as a topic for presentation. How to make your client pay more? Because that was the only way for us to make more profit. So here is a bad news. You cannot make your clients in any way. And these rakes are for me, because when I step on them, I, I'm hit on the head, and I go on. So, with the client and with rakes, the result is always the same. Unfortunately, our mentality is that we are always looking for some magic button or universal pill who will cure all the diseases, but this is not the case. Also, there are some solutions which we made and which brought some results. We are making metrics and statistics and have lots of solutions and support for those data. But, but initially we thought that most of them were suicidal, so you cannot make the client pay more, but you can change the rules of the game. And I have three cases how we change those rules. The first one is the minimum order, and here you can tell me there is nothing surprising. We All of us have it. At the local market, the minimum charge is one page. Stas, what about you? And what is the minimum charge for us? Approximately one page. <laughs> I didn't want to make in text uncomfortable. And uh, this one page is a problem because we used to have one page too. When we started this, we started with retail documents. So, and we thought that minimum charge of one page is 100 or 150 hryvnias. But when you attract one retail client, you have to pay 100 or 150 hryvnias. So, if I divide my marketing budget on the number of clients who brought me money, I will get 150 hryvnias for one client who made an order. So, let's go on thinking. We are not spending money on internet marketing and we get clients from somewhere. Things happen, you know. People to people contacts is the best way to sell. But we are spending money on processing order to create a quote for the client, we have to spend time of project manager. So let's summarize it with the renting price and cookies if you want, and then you should divide that on the number of quotes that you make per month. And you will understand that your minimum charge may, be, may not even cover the cost of 
providing one quote. Because this is what we do. We thought that our minimum charge is three pages. We have a client, they have to translate a certificate from a bank and I, we tell them, you pay us for three pages or we are not interested in you because we are sick and tired of personal documentation and we decided to get rid of that. And it worked. The results are as follows. The average check increased by 30% because of the increase of minimum charge and that's about 310 grivnias in our case because the average check is just usually low. The number of orders, we, uh, we are counting uh, the indicator of refusals. It's it's nine. It's down by nine percent. By increasing the minimum charge from one page to three, we are losing just every tenth client, and the result is like this. It's not correct in my case to speak about profit because personal documents for us is just uh, something extra which doesn't bring a lot to us. But my my task was to level this uh, direction of financial figures and this decision helped me a lot. The fixed price for documents, it also is interesting for retail uh, clients. When we have a person contacting us to translate an enclosure to diploma, it's about from two to five pages because there are different number of subjects and many other things. How can you calculate the prices at the market? They say the price for the page is 100 grivnias. We'll divide and multiply that and then we'll come up with the price. And we decided we are not, not interested in this. We are taking the price for the maximum number of pages. It's five, because five is the maximum number. We have a fixed price. Enclosure to diploma is five pages always, and it works. Because for the client, 500 grivnias now is better than from 250 to 700 tomorrow. So we increased two times our profit because we used such indexes that it was it was very good increasing the price for complexity we are getting away from the uh, from the personal documents every company every other company provides the same price for uh, pr translating any level of complexity. It's the same price for translating a certificate as for the technical uh, documentation or clinical protocols, tests. In Europe, uh, they have the same price for everything. When you localize uh, software, for example, interface is one price, but uh, the, prog the software is another. Do you have a difference between legal and pharmaceutical documents? Yes. And uh, it's even higher if we talk about IT documents. Not for everyone, but Stas. You probably don't know. And Kirill, what about you? Yes, if it's a medical text, when you need to attract specialists, professionals and experts in the field, of course, such documents are more expensive and the client usually pays for that willingly. When we go to the car show case, when we go to the car room, when we choose a new BMW and you have a standard set, you usually pay for the leather <laughs> in the car. So, according to our analysis of the market, half of the com companies in the internal markets are not providing something for increased uh, complexity. And uh, we, we introduced this in our account. company and clients are supporting this. Clients understand what they pay for if you communicate that right.
And if you haven't done that as yet, if you uh, still have the same price, it is a possibility for you to increase the quality, because if you earn more from the client, then you can pay more to the translator, and then you can attract a better translator, and you will get more clients as a result. These are three cases which we tried to change the rules of the game. But I will be frank with you, they're changing the situation, but they're not radically change it. They're improving it, but not introducing radical changes to this. Increasing value, I think, is the key point to this in price making. Two years ago, we started not to be engaged in price uh, races. And we said, we looked at the price on the market and we said this is not a competitor for us, so we minus 3% from this price and we go on working. For two years we're not doing this. Now our focus is on quality. The matter is that the price sells us once at the first uh, application. And the quality sells us every next time. Therefore, we decided not to form the value, the cost, so that we are bought uh, very quickly. Now we look at the costs, at the compensation of the cost, and how we can provide an appropriate product. And this is how we make our prices. As a result, in 2015, we increased the price by 40%. We did it in four phases, and every phase was 10% increase with intervals of two months. Was that for retail clients or wholesale uh, or, or, and corporate clients? Yes, that was for all our customers, because we work in Russia and uh, in Kazakhstan as subcontractors. In total, we increased the price by 40% and we lost 10% of clients, and so we gained 30%. Was it simple? No, it was not. So you are stepping on this rake and you are thinking whether you will be hit or not. <laughs> Every time that you come closer to those, those race, I cannot concentrate on the presentation and I think so. I wish he wouldn't step on the rakes again. Every time when we want to increase the price, uh, I'm in this position, I'm afraid. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that everyone was, of, of, has the same feelings, whether we will lose the clients, maybe we can live together, get along because everything is bad in this country, maybe we should not take risks. We will keep on, yes, maybe we'll earn twice as much, uh, twice uh, less than now. No, really, it was, it was for six months I had this, I had these problems, I was in depression, deep depression. Can you understand me? But then we tried, we understood it wasn't painful, it was cool. We liked it, and this year we had two price increases already, and the last one was one week before I came here. Do you know, it really works. It's not scary, but of course we measure it, because there is market elasticity and we, you can't just increase prices all the time. On some stage this proportion will be equal or will turn upside down and it will and it will mean that we are too far away. But here I can listen that everybody increase prices. Let's agree. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, we tried. No, we didn't try, of course not. Could you tell us details, please? And, to, and on the record, right? No, it doesn't work because... 
every time there will be somebody who will lose his temper. So? I also wanted to add that every player on the market is different and you can't propose the same price to different players because the, the specter of the services is different. We don't believe in the possibilities of agree, agree coordinate, something else. I just I just showed you the case. I, I just showed something that works. You want to you want to own you want to not to earn a lot of money, you want to give 30 green for your page for the translators, you have to, do you want to have this reputation? You know how Lebedev taught, how to motivate yourself to do something. Don't motivate yourself, just keep standing there as where you are. I came here to show our examples, how does it work. Our prices are high, high as the average market prices, we keep on increasing them. So if your price for the English is less than 100 grivna, you can, incre you can increase it. But there is one rule. <coughs> In price wars, there is one rule. If one player decreases prices, everybody else decreases prices as well. It's silly to think that if you will, if you'll take less from the client, we will win in long-term perspective. No, everybody will lose because everybody will decrease their prices 1% less, everybody will earn less. Who will win? Nobody will. Only the person will, uh, will who will do it the first. On our market, it will last just for one month. That's why if we create value for the client, we have a right to ask for more money for this value. That's the end of my presentation. We can finish it on this phrase. But there is a second part as well. And the last thing I want to tell you, it's very important to communicate to communicate with the client in, in your right way. If you just add to the agreement 30% increase to the prices, they won't understand you. Please build your communication. Please explain why is it necessary. We, we do it in this way that the price of work of the translators of how stuff is more expensive now and we have a choice. We can attract students and to and to make prime cost lower, but the quality will be low as well. We can't accept it. That's why we increase prices. We don't tell about inflation. We we work on our efficiency, so on and so forth. We explain that this is required. If you Want to continue working with us? But let's keep on moving. Did we lose clients? We did. I remember the, their names, but according to the figures, we didn't lose our profit. Now it is a time that the people are ready for price increase because price are increased for everything, and we know why. That's why it is the best time to do it. And maybe it's not correct to, uh, to bring you mistakes, but do not tell about them. What mistakes did we make? And the important is price formation on the market without, uh, without prime cost. We were trying to agree to agree the price and to sell on this price, but we never understand where we own, where, where we lose. We had such a picture that at the end of the month we make report and profit always was a surprise for me. Why it was? Because I wasn't able to forecast it. Because I didn't know where we earn money, in which segments. We didn't understand what projects are profitable for us, what which projects which projects are not. Let's be honest with each other. We are not we are not working with the same price with everybody. There are happy clients uh, who could bring better prices from us. Sometimes we are happy because we could sell ourselves more expensive, and then we get the profit. But on, who, on whom we lose, on whom we earn, very often we don't know. And what we did, it took a lot of time of us, we calculated how many, how many fixed expenses we spent to every page. What do I mean by fixed costs? Salaries, rent, software, 
That's what we pay and which amount we need to spend every month, even if you have less volume of translators. This is translator, editor, printing, publishing. That's what we pay for the work. And there are fixed for cost, our office, our personal. So we divided our fixed cost to the number of pages we did per, uh, we did per month. And we understand how much money we need to add to the prime cost, how much money to add to translate and to editor to understand our prime cost. And you know, now I can I can go to one, prog um, one program to look at the yesterday the yesterday report and to see that on this client for example we don't make money let's increase price but my life was more complicated during two months because we didn't have this system because during this time I needed to re to resign the contracts with every client it took a lot of time after that in the agreement we have a we have the right for unilateral price increase we stand on this condition and in most of agreements we have it and now we increase prices for the most of the clients um, just in uh, just in one step and also these delays with the price increase uh, we had this problem because we increased the salary but we didn't increase profit at the same time and after that we had doubts do we need to increase it or not it's better to increase f increase uh, prices for a client and after that to increase salaries for your employees and we still have time now I would like to have a discussion with you. Is it possible to have low cost in translation industry? And it's possible if it is crowdsourcing, but I don't think for our business crowdsourcing can be solution. Low cost is possible if you make logistical platforms that allows to save on order order processing. We we fired our PMs and now we can increase prime cost but what for to do it in this way if you know how to make it cheaper what for we need low cost and as a low cost our local market believes is like this one what what low costers proposes without seat without meal water for money without luggage but you sit in the plane you get the main value you can move from a to b but at the same time in translation industry we do annual annual market analysis and know a lot of things about our market and I understood from for myself low cost model for the local market and it is it is called it is called translation translation for bullocks you propose to the client the lowest price at the market of course client come who are sensitive to the price you make terrible translation for them because really, which which other translation you can propose for this for this amount of money? Of course, it's terrible. They they don't understand you anymore. But you earn money on him, right? And I have a feeling that a lot of Ukrainian companies work according to this to this model, and you and that is the low and that is the low cost. But you get the service, but the quality doesn't correspond to its goal. Is low cost possible in our market? What do you think in normal format? Yes, as you say, it's single time solution for one client. So it's right, you can do it just one time, but but you spend money on attraction as well. And this attraction that costs 150 green average for one client can work only only if this money will return together with few more orders from this client. You know, some time ago we adjusted this, the company strategy and we asked ourselves what is what was the translation, what kind of product is this one? And I don't think it's a new information. You won't be surprised that the translation is not a product. It's not an product. We don't buy medication just to keep it in the pocket, right? We buy medication to prevent disease or to cure disease. In the same way, 
Translation is made to let our client to achieve his goals, to bring some equipment, to adjust it, to register some, medic some medical drug, to award a contract with foreign clients, to translate website. I think you know better than me what for what for we do translation, but it's not the end goal for the client. He uses this translation for something else. So the question is, do we create value for the client? Do we create value from the from the point of view of its end usage? We believe we can create this value only if we provide quality product. We follow it. I know that in text, in text also follows the quality and records, right? Yes. In what way it happens? In every letter, in every letter that is sent to our client with, with the ready translation, there is a link where we ask to evaluate the to evaluate the quality of work, the quality of translation, the quality of PM, the quality of accounting department. We also evaluate because. For many clients of ours, it's very important to keep the documents in order, you know, kind of bureaucracy. If you don't do it, I, I recommend you to start. How much time do I have? I have three, three more minutes left. So I have a few questions for you. You can, uh, you can think about them and knowing and if you find the replies, it might be interesting. Average check, for example, what is your average order? Just take your, your average turn, turnover and divide it per number of orders. And what is the, and what is the cost of attraction of one client? Do you use marketing department or you go to conference or use some other ways? Divide your budget per attracted clients. How much does it cost? What is what is the size of fixed cost you have for one page of translated text? Because we think that the price of client minus price of translated of and editors, that's what we gain. But it's not true. And here there is a question of prime cost of one page of translation. Because when I come to client and tell him 150 grina per page, he, he says, no, 130. And my prime cost in 129. From one side, this 20 grina discount is not, is not much. But when we know our prime cost, we understand where is business for us and where is when where is no business. And of course, the percentage of clients that come that come again. It's possibly the the most difficult the the most difficult to measure, but at the same time the most interesting parameter. So I would like to finish finish this one presentation. I will be happy to share examples and cases with you. I can tell you more uh, without cameras what I told you about. You can come to me during lunch time. Any questions or comments to our speaker? What about urgent orders? Do you have separate price for them or it is it is the same? Yes, of course, we have separate price for urgency. We had approached plus 100 percent, but we look at the market attentively and we understood that plus 100, it's not it's not an actual price, and now you have plus 50 percent for urgent orders. But it's easy for us to make to make urg uh, urgent orders because we have server. And what do you mean by urgent order? Everything, everything simple. We have gun diagram. It calculates according to time limits how much time we need to make the work. One translator, one editor, one reviewer, and we uh, we just plus them to each other and we understand. If you want to do it quicker, okay, we can do it with two translators, for example. But pay us more. And if it is some dead format and we we are not sure we can provide the, the uniqueness of terminology. We tell them about the risks. And I have an idea. Yuri, you told 
we need to differentiate the prices for the uh, for, uh, for other kind of translation depending on the difficulty and there is one more trend for some easy subject fields to have higher price in the same way as you have maximum for one order like that like that your example with five pages what ex what do you propose exactly to give expensive price for everybody or to cheap price for everybody ah uh, yes that's what i do i give expensive price for everybody sasha if it works for you well done because of course this approach is much more better but on our market you know the competition maybe you maybe you haven't heard about it but there is competition in local market yeah i don't know much about local market so there is a competition on this market and to start communication with the client you need to offer cheap price you need to offer bmw without leather salon and after that you you start adding other components yeah i think that zaporozhets it's a it's a better definition for our market I just want it very much. That's what I had in mind. Hello, Yuri. You told a few times you calculate prime cost of one page by dividing all fixed costs by the number of pages you translated in one month. But the volume of pages months to months is different correspondingly. You have different prime cost of one page, right? Or how do you calculate this indicator? Yes, really, the number of orders is different, but average is not correct because if you take average in bad months, you won't have wow effect. That's why we take average pessimistic figure. Well, for example, we, sele we select one month and we decided that we will calculate it based on this month. And we did, and we didn't take the most successful months. It means that if you have good months, this uh, fixed co fixed cost will be uh, lower. And now I'm thinking about uh, adjust them every month or just to leave them on on this below average months. For us, it's a new experience. I would like to repeat: we were calculating the prime cost for a long time. And so far, I'm still thinking about what to do with it. Thank you very much, Yuri Kirill Fedota from Intex. The question is, minimum order. Retail, retail is clear, but what about corporate clients? Did you implement such a practice there? And is a fixed minimum charge in the contracts with your corporate clients? Very good question, thank you. For corporate for corporate contracts, we didn't do it yet, but we are going to do it. Now I'm looking for uh, for a format. We can say minimum three pages, or we can say minimum 390 grivnas, for example. I didn't find a way yet how to sell this idea to the client. For sure, that is the next step. I will do it because I want to repeat that the, the, the orders is evil. I don't know how to live with Agile. We need to optimize the processing uh, very quickly to, to make the processing much more lower. Okay, well, uh, good luck. To